What's up YouTube, Alvaro here, welcome to the Bilingual Stock Market channel again. In this channel we talk about the stock market and we do it in two different languages, English and Spanish. So if English is not your cup of tea, you can also watch it for the same video narrated by me in Spanish. And in this video I want to break down from a technical standpoint the five stocks that will be on the top of my watch list for next week. I also want to show you guys some day trades that I took last Friday and I also want to break down from a technical standpoint of the S&P 500 because the bulls took complete control of the S&P 500 last Friday. So now the $1 million question is, was last Friday a massive bull trap? Or on the flip side, are the bulls going to be able to take on 4,000 points in the S&P 500? Are the bulls going to be able to take on that fat number? So I hope you all had a great weekend and before starting the video, remember guys, we are posting stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays right after the market closes. So if you want to get our notifications in a timely manner, the notifications of those videos in a timely manner, you'd better be subscribed to the channel. So go ahead and subscribe. And please also remember to activate the notification bell. So with that further ado, let's get started. And the first day trade that I want to show you guys, because I actually took three day trades last Friday, three successful day trades. And the first one was on Facebook. So let me pull up here. OK, Facebook real quick. And in the case of Facebook, guys, and this this will say trade that I actually called out in one of the videos that we posted last week in one of the stock market update videos that we are posting Mondays through Thursdays. So take a look at this, guys. I said in one of those videos last week that if I happen to see Facebook consolidating at around $280, I was going to take a day trade. So I purchased 100 shares of Facebook at $280. And like, I don't know, 10 minutes after that, I sold those 100 shares at $280.42. Okay, this was a $142 profit in a, in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, okay, give or take. Another day trade that I took on Friday was Baidu. And in the case of Baidu, guys, take a look at what happened here, okay? So I purchased 30 shares at $176.82. And why did I purchase these 30 shares at this price? I didn't actually had a research work on Baidu, okay, when I took this trade, guys. But Baidu was falling and falling and falling and falling and falling on Friday before we double bottomed in the S&P 500. <clears throat> and the RSI of Baidu, guys, got down to 15 or 13 points. So I was watching Baidu and I was like, wow, this stock is extremely, extremely oversold. And I noticed that the S&P 500 was about to uh, make a double bottom. And the second that the S&P 500 double bottomed and started to pull up, I was like, you know what? This stock is extremely oversold. I'm going to purchase 30 shares. So I purchased 30 shares of Baidu at $176.82 and I sold those 30 shares like, I don't know, this was like, this was a 20 minute trade, guys, at $182.24. OK, this was a $162 profit again in a matter of minutes. OK. And another day trade that I took on Friday was with ARK Innovation ETF. Okay, by the way, this is the first stock that I am going to be talking about in this video, okay, that I am going to be breaking down from a technical standpoint. So with ARK Innovation happened the same thing as uh, what happened with Baidu, guys. The S&P 500 was falling, okay? We had a, a bunch of stocks, you know, uh, getting deep into very oversold territory. So I actually purchased this uh, 35 shares of ARK a bit later after I purchased the shares of Baidu, right? So the RSI of ARK Innovation ETF 
also got below 20 points and I was like, wow, this stock is extremely oversold. The S&P 500 is finding a double bottom. We are pulling up, all right? The NDX is pulling up as well. So I am going to take a chance on ARK Innovation. So I purchased 35 shares at $109.82 and I ended up selling out of those shares at $113.02, okay? Like 15 or 20 minutes later, right? And this was a, this, this trade, okay, uh, represented for me 112, a $112 profit, guys. So I ended up making $416, all right, out of these day trades in one single day, guys. And the message that I want to get across here, guys, is that this is not rocket science. This doesn't take an Einstein. Everyone can do this. I am not a genius. I am just a regular Joe. So the only thing that you guys need to do is being disciplined, doing your research work, and manage your money responsibly. That's it, guys. Okay? Anyone can do this. So this is pretty much the message that I... Uh, want to get across with showing you guys these day trades that I took last uh, Friday and I also closed other trades on Friday. I closed uh, two, tra two swing trades on Snowflake. I also closed a swing trade on Shopify. So you guys can go ahead and do the math, guys. This is, this is an unbelievable business, but it requires a great effort, okay, in order to be successful at it, okay? And now let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500, guys. So here you guys can see a one minute chart of the s p 500 so take a look at this guys what i was just talking about okay the s p 500 made a double bottom on friday here you guys can see it okay right after the s p 500 okay made a double bottom it went on an absolute rocket ride okay it went from 39 39.17 up to 39.78 points in a matter of one hour and 50 minutes unbelievable guys okay a 61 point rally on friday okay it almost the s p 500 all, almost hit a new all-time high okay the all-time high in the s p 500 is at 39.83 okay we missed the all-time high but by five points or something like that okay so what could potentially happen next week on the s p 500 guys i am going to pull up here the four hour short and take a look at these guys this is something that is a bit concerning okay to my eyes the rsi or the relative strength index of the s p 500 is at 62 points okay so the s p 500 is officially in overbought territory okay this doesn't imply i mean the rsi is a bit elevated but it's not like too high up so this doesn't imply that we cannot go any higher all right but we are certainly in uh, overbought territory so i'm going to pull up here the 20 day short and what could happen next week so if what happened last friday was actually a bull trap we have two immediate levels of support here in this index. The first one is going to be 39.53, okay? 39.53 is going to, if if this index happens to pull back, this, this level is, uh, is supposed to provide a good support for the bulls because it was a resistance for the bulls in one and two opportunities in the past and it also acted as a support for the bulls in the S&P 500 on March 16th okay so the first level of support in the S&P 500 3952 3950 okay if that level happens to be broken to the downside then the next level of support is going to be 3914 this is a critical level like a critical level in the S&P 500 and why well because 3914 has acted as a support for the bulls in this index in one two three four and five times before okay and 3914 or 3915 give or take is also a form of resistance okay it acted as a resistance back on march 10th march 9th 
March 2nd and March 1st, okay? So definitely anything above 39.15, okay, is bullish territory and below 39.15 is, you know, territory in which the, the bears are going to start taking control of the S&P 500. So in the case of the upside, the next foreseeable upside is going to be all-time high at 39.83 and let's see if despite the fact that the RSI on the 4 hour short is at 61 points, let's see if the bulls can keep up the bullish momentum and take an all-time high maybe tomorrow or on Tuesday, okay? So let's see what happens in the S&P 500. Uh, last Friday could have been a bull trap. Yeah, it could have been a bull trap, guys, but I, I mean, the, the close of last Friday was extremely bullish. So if I had to take a chance here, guys, I would say that we are about to take on the fat number, the 4,000 points, okay? And when it comes to the uh, five stocks on the top of my watch list, then the first is going to be ARK Innovation ETF, okay? And in the case of ARK Innovation ETF, guys, you know this ETF, you know, that behind ARK Invest, we find Cathy Woods, right? Uh, I think, in my opinion, this is the hottest uh, ETF out there by far. But we already know that this uh, ETF has been severely hit by the brutal sell-off that we have seen lately on tech and growth stocks, right? So inside this ETF, and for those that, that are not familiar with ARK Innovation, we find stocks such as Tesla, Square, Teladoc, Spotify, Twitter, DraftKings, all right? So needless to say, taking into account the, you know, the stocks that are included in this ETF, this is a very volatile ETF. So if any of you wants to invest in ARK Innovation at a long term, you guys have to be ready to go on a wild ride, all right? <laughs> so in the case of investing in this ETF at a long term, we find ARK ETF as of now trading 30% of its highs. So this is a very, but very compelling long-term discount. And in my case, guys, my first entry price for this uh, ETF is going to be $110. And take a look at this, guys, because we just talked about the double bottom on the S&P 500 that gave rise to the massive uh, run up of uh, 61 points last Friday. So take a look at this. We find in the case of ARK innovation also a double bottom pattern, okay? And remember, a double bottom pattern is a bullish uh, a pattern because it suggests a change of trend, all right? And as you guys can see over here on the four hour chart, ARK innovation ETF is clearly downtrending, okay? So this double bottom pattern could suggest that ARK Innovation ETF might reverse this downtrend that we have seen on ARK since mid-February, right? So, take a look at this, guys. This double pattern, okay, from a technical standpoint, coincides with $110 per share, give or take, okay? $110 has acted as a support for ARK in one, two, and three opportunities before. And $110 also acted as a resistance that ARK couldn't take on back on, uh, that was November 24th of last year, okay? So $110, okay, as I said, uh, give or take, $109, $110, okay, is a critical support for ARK Innovation ETF. So if I happen to see Okay, the markets as a whole pulling back. I am a buyer of ARK Innovation ETF at $110 for sure. This is my first entry price for this ETF. Okay, however, since we have a double bottom pattern and it looks like ARK Innovation could reverse the downtrend, we could also think about this ETF as a momentum play. So we have, a, a, we have a very important resistance coming up for this ETF at $118, okay? $118 was a previous support for ARK in two opportunities, one and two. So it is supposed to act as a new resistance to the upside. So if I happen to see ARK ETF breaking above $118, I am, I, I will probably be 
picking up some shares of this ETF in order to probably take a day trade, guys, because the next resistance, all right, above $118 is going to be the 50 SMA on the 4-hour short at $121, okay? $121 is supposed to act, all right, to the upside as a resistance for our ETF because it already acted as a support for this ETF in one two and three opportunities before okay so my momentum play in the case of arc would be as i said before picking up some shares once i see arc etf bursting above 118 dollars and my price target would be 121 dollars okay if any of you guys uh, you know is more ambitious when it comes to the price target a higher price target in the case of ARC would be $133, okay? Which is the 180 SMA on the fold hour short, okay? So watch out for ARC innovation next week, either visiting $110 or bursting above $118 per share, okay? And the second stock of this video, guys, is going to be PayPal. And in the case of PayPal, guys, its sticker symbol is PYPL and this is a company that needs no introduction okay everybody knows PayPal and by the way guys this was a suggestion of one of the viewers of our videos in Spanish Jose Martinez is his name and I'm telling you guys if you want me to analyze or to break down any given stock from a technical standpoint please drop a comment down below and let me know all right okay PayPal guys what is going on with PayPal PayPal is as of now trading here we find a very attractive long-term discount as well it is trading 22 percent of its highs all right and what's my plan when it comes to paypal guys okay i have two entry prices in the case of paypal my first entry price i need to see paypal bursting above the next very strong resistance that is coming up for paypal at 245 dollars per share okay 245 dollars was a former support for paypal okay in one and two opportunities and it also acted before as a very strong resistance for paypal in one two three and four opportunities in the past okay so expect a huge overhead resistance for paypal at 245 dollars so if i happen to see paypal bursting above 245 dollars i am a buyer of this stock and my price target is going to be the 180 sma and the four hour shirt at around 260 dollars okay so my first enterprise for PayPal, $245.50, $246, okay? However, to the downside, if we happen to see, okay, or if I happen to see rather PayPal visiting again the $225 per share, I am for sure picking up a bunch of shares of PayPal, guys, $225 uh, $225 has acted as a support for PayPal in one, two, three, four, and five opportunities before, okay? So we can expect a very strong support for this stock at $225, okay? So it looks like PayPal can break this downtrend channel that you guys can see over here, and it could actually break it if it bursts above $245 dollars okay the rsi is at 52 points neither overbought nor oversold so my two prices for paypal uh, guys okay this is crystal clear for me bursting above 245 dollars or dropping down to 225 dollars per share in the case of paypal okay and the third stock of this video is going to be cciv sure shield <laughs> sure shield capital guys all right in the case of cciv and remember guys <clears throat> that cciv is a special purpose acquisition company this company is taking public 
Lucid Motors, which is an electric vehicle manufacturer that will manufacture luxury electric vehicles, okay? The least expensive vehicle that Lucid has revealed so far will start at $77,000. So, in other words, this company pretends to compete with Tesla's Model S, all right? So, I wish them well, guys. I will just put it that way, okay? And when it comes to the technicals of CCIV, this is the first time ever that I talk about Lucid Motors here on the channel. So if you guys remember, this stock went up like crazy, right? Before the news of a merger between CCIV and Lucid Motors was confirmed. That was back in the back in mid-February, I, I think, right? Yeah. February 16th, okay, so CCIV went from $37 up to almost $65. This happened in only a matter of two trading sessions, guys. This was truly unbelievable. And once Lucid Motors or CCIV got up to $65, there was no way of justifying a valuation for this company at $65, okay? So right after that, the stock simply collapsed, okay? This is a company that hasn't sold one single vehicle so far right so you know an electric vehicle company that hasn't sold uh, so far not even one single car trading at 65 dollars absolutely insane all right so what's my plan when it comes to lucid motors or ccib so my first entry price here is going to be $21.29. Take a look at this. $21.29 has acted as a support for Lucid Motors in one, two, three, four, five times before. Okay, so if we happen to see again the markets pulling back as a whole, I am a buyer of 200 or 300 shares of, of CCIV at $21, uh, the lowest $21, okay? Let's just put it that way, okay? My second entry price in the case of CCIV would be as a momentum play, guys, okay? Uh, CCIV closed on Friday at $23, okay? And take a look at this, guys. The 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart coincides with a very important level of former resistance and support for CCIV. So, $27.33 acted as a support for CCIV in one and two opportunities before, and it also acted as a very strong level of resistance in one, two, three, and four times before. So if CCIV happens to reverse this downtrend that we can see on the four hour chart, it is very, but very likely to find an important level of overhead resistance at $27.30 give or take okay my price target okay for both enterprises is going to be the 180 sma and the four hour short at 31 dollars or 32 dollars per share give or take okay and take a look at these guys from 21 dollars and 50 cents up to up to the 180 sma we're talking about a 32 percent profit and from the 50 sma up to the 180 SMA, we're talking about a 18% profit, okay? So this is nothing to sneeze at, taking into account that I am talking about a short-term trade. So watch out for CCIV, guys, either dropping down to $21.50 or bursting above $27.50, okay? And the fourth stock of this video is going to be good old Tesla Mayesla, guys. Let me pull up here the four hour chart. And in the case of Tesla, guys, you know that we have had uh, electric vehicle stocks under pressure lately because of this situation of the ship shortages. And this is short term stuff, guys. I mean, this doesn't affect the long-term story of at least Neo and Tesla, okay? Neo actually shut down uh, their factory in China for five days, but this is simply short-term stuff, and yep, both Tesla and Neo uh, have been selling off aggressively. They uh, Tesla actually closed negative on Friday, it went down $21 or almost 4%, 3.39%, okay? But this is just dumb uh, investors and people selling out of Neo and Tesla 
because because of something that we want to remember about in six months or 12 months okay so this is nothing but a buying opportunity okay uh, in the case of tesla and neo guys all right by the way guys i was almost forgetting about this this is a rumor all right i am this hasn't been confirmed but there was a conference call okay in tesla uh, this week supposedly so Elon Musk called all of the workers uh, he gave a call to all of the workers of the company and he said and as I said before this hasn't been confirmed yet but he said during that call he supposedly said that Tesla could finish this year 2021 selling 1 million vehicles guys okay and mind you during the conference call uh, because of the last earnings report of Tesla that was back in January, Tesla estimated to deliver this year 750,000 vehicles. So that was, you know, the, the estimate that was put out three months ago. If Tesla happens to sell 1 million vehicles this year instead of 750,000, so you guys can figure how that is going to affect the price of the stock in the short term okay i'm talking about into the closing of the year so keep that in mind guys because it hasn't been confirmed but there are rumors that that tele telephone call okay from musk to the uh, workers of tesla happened and he said that they think that it is possible to deliver 1 million vehicles by the end of this year oh my god <laughs> okay so tesla is trading as of now guys 33 uh, percent of its highs okay so for those who might be interested in opening a long-term position in tesla you guys are still on time don't forget about that okay and take a look at these guys i'm gonna i'm gonna make the tesla bears happy today take a look at this the worst correction ever for tesla happened during the covid 19 crash okay tesla dropped last year let me see over here 62 percent okay obviously uh, this dropped happened okay uh, because of very uh, specific uh, conditions okay many people thought that COVID-19 was the end of the world and all that bad stuff okay we all know that but if that scenario happens to unfold if Tesla happens to drop 62 percent guys today or, le or let's say you know in the in the upcoming weeks we are talking about Tesla dropping down to three hundred and thirty dollars per share okay i think that this would be like the very very but extremely worst case scenario for tesla and i'm and i ask you guys would any of you buy tesla at 330 bucks per share even the bears out there please drop a comment down below and let me know all right okay in the case of tesla you guys know that i am a long-term investor in this company so i don't trade tesla uh you know the regular way buying shares and stuff like that but i do buy call options okay uh on tesla so i have two price targets here to buy tesla calls my first price target is going to be 539 dollars okay 539 dollars has acted for for tesla as a support in one and two opportunities in the past and it was also a very critical area of resistance for tesla back in october 31st uh, sorry august 31st of last year okay and it was also the low for tesla back on march 5th okay so i think that 538 dollars is definitely call options territory for me okay however if the markets as a whole happen to drop a lot and we see tesla uh, breaking 539 dollars to the downside i think that the next very important level of support for tesla is going to be 467 dollars okay 467 dollars acted as a very important level of resistance for tesla already 
in one, two, and three opportunities before, okay? So my first enterprise to uh, buy call options for Tesla is going to be $539, and the second one is going to be $460, yeah, $465, give or take. Mind you guys, we because Tesla closed on Friday at $618, we have two very important levels of resistance coming up for Tesla. The first one is going to be the 50 SMA on the 4-hour chart at $664, and the next one, okay, or a higher uh, resistance for Tesla is a critical and I need to highlight critical level of resistance, okay, at $721. $721 coincides with the 180 SMA on the 4-hour shirt, and it also coincides with a with an area of, of resistance that Tesla couldn't take on in two opportunities in the past, okay? Back on uh, March uh, 10th and also back on March 3rd and March 2nd as well. So we can expect a huge resistance for the bulls at $721. So if any of you guys is interested in taking a swing trade on Tesla, take a look at this, from $538 up to the 180 SMA, we're talking about a 24, 25% profit, okay? And even better, from the from $463 up to the 180 SMA, we are talking about a 35% profit, okay? So watch out for Tesla, guys. Either bursting above $660, which is the next overhead resistance, or visiting again the $538, all right? And the last stock of this video, guys, is going to be Oracle. And in the case of Oracle, guys, this was uh, a request of another viewer of our videos in Spanish. His name is Jose Martinez. And I'm telling you guys, let me know. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you want me to break down any stock for you from a technical standpoint. All right. And you guys know Oracle. OK, this is a very well known tech company Okay, that focuses on cloud services, hardware products and hardware related software. And take a look at these guys. This stock went absolutely bananas during the last two trading sessions. Oracle pulled up almost 6% in only two trading sessions. And this is not a vol volatile stock like Tesla or NEO. So this was definitely an unusual uh, move to the upside for Oracle. Okay. And thanks to that very aggressive move to the upside, we find the RSI as of now on the four hour short at 74 points, okay? Very, but very elevated. So I'm going to zoom in here on the four hour short. So I'm thinking guys that Oracle is definitely due for a pullback, okay? So the RSI can come back to earth. And if it happens to pull back my first enterprise in the case of Oracle is going to be $68. $68 acted as a support for Oracle back on December 25th, and it also acted as a resistance back on March 15th and March 16th as well. So if the RSI, as I said before, drops a bit, which should do it, it is extremely high up. I don't, I don't see Oracle keep on pulling up, honestly, right? And take a look at these guys from $68 up to $70.50, which is a resistance in which Oracle failed on last Friday and also failed on March 5th. We are talking about a almost 3.20% profit, okay? Nothing bad, taking into account that we're talking about a stock that is not that volatile. Uh, so this is my, pretty much this is my only price for Oracle, guys. If any of you likes momentum plays, then you can make the case that if Oracle happens to keep on pulling up, despite the fact that the RSI is so elevated, so if it, can, if it keeps on pulling up and it bursts above six, seventy, $71, all right, we could make the case that it can reach a new all-time high at, at almost $74, okay? Only based on momentum and, and huge volume, maybe? Okay, that, that is not a, a play that I am going to, 
to, to that, that is not a trade that I am going to be taking definitely. So in the case of Oracle, give me $68. And I know that many of you guys like momentum plays. So yeah, definitely this this stock has this stock is on fire and it could very well be a momentum play bursting above $71 up to $74 per share, which would represent a new all-time high in the case of Oracle. Okay, but regardless of the RSI, I think that Oracle is looking very but very bullish and it should be taking on uh, all-time highs sooner rather than later, okay? And with Oracle, guys, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention. If you found value in this video, please hit that like button for me and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done it yet. And also remember to activate the notification bell so you guys can get the notifications of the videos that we are posting Mondays through Thursdays right after the market closes in a timely manner. In those videos, I am breaking down from a technical standpoint both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100, which are the most important indices of the United States stock market, and I am also breaking down from a technical standpoint the three stocks that I am going to be trading in the next trading session. Follow us on Instagram as well, guys, at Bilingual Stock Market. We are posting news and information on a daily basis on our Instagram account. And remember that this is the Bilingual Stock Market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the stock market, but we do it in two different languages languages, English and Spanish, but most importantly, the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses, it is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro, and I will see you guys tomorrow right after the market closes. Peace out. Keep on crushing the markets.